Hello everyone, a bank reconciliation is an important accounting process because it will let us know the accuracy of our accounting entries. It can also detect some types of fraud and it will prevent NSF checks or bounce checks resulting to overdraft fees. The main goal of bank reconciliation is to make sure that all transactions in our bank statement are recorded in QuickBooks. If there are transactions that are missing, then we should enter them to QuickBooks. And if there are transactions in QuickBooks that are not in the bank statements, then we should determine or identify if the transactions are legit or valid. It is advisable to do a monthly bank reconciliation when your bank sends you your monthly bank statement. Some big companies that has many transactions in a day are even doing bank reconciliation on a daily basis. So it is also a good accounting practice to have a separate bank account for the business and don't mix it with your personal finances. For today's video, we're going to do a complete bank reconciliation based on a bank statement from the Bank of America. This is our bank statement. This is the name of the organization or the business. This is the cycle of the bank account. So the transactions are from July 1st to July 31st, 2013. This is the account number. The beginning balance on July 1st, 2013 is 23.62 cents. And the total for the deposits and other credits is 12,524.50. The withdrawal and other debits is 4,295.99. There are no paper checks. The service fees or the bank charges is 129.95. The ending balance on July 31st is 8,122.18. We're going to use this information in QuickBooks. So I'll go to QuickBooks. This is the icon for the bank reconciliation, reconcile. I will click this. And I'm going to choose our bank account. So the Bank of America checking account ending in 7852. The statement date is July 31st, 2013. This account balance is from the ending balance of our June bank reconciliation. So if this amount is not correct, then there is something wrong with our previous bank reconciliation. If that will happen, then we need to go back to our June bank statement, maybe undo the last bank reconciliation and then do another bank reconciliation for June so that we can arrive at the correct beginning balance for July. And then I'm going to type in the ending balance for July. So it's 8,122.18. 8,122.18. I have already recorded the bank service charges and the interest earned in, inside QuickBooks, so we can skip this part. I will click continue. Okay. So this portion here are the deposits and other credits. And this portion here are the checks, the paper checks that you issue to your vendors or to your suppliers, or these are the expenses or the payments to our vendors or suppliers. This portion here is the summary of your total deposits and other credits, and then your checks and other payments. And as we check the transactions, it will also create a total amount here based on our clear transactions. This is the summary for the service charges or the bank charges and any bank interest. So this is the ending balance from our bank statement. This, the cleared balance is the beginning balance for July. And the difference is the difference between the ending balance and the cleared balance. Our main goal here is that we should arrive at a difference of zero. If the difference will be zero, then it means that we have successfully reconciled our bank account. As we go along, as we check transactions, the cleared balance will also increase until it will reach 8,122.18, which is the ending balance. So by that time, the difference will be zero. Okay, so let's start with our deposits and other credits. So I'll go back to our bank statement. This is our deposits and other credits. So the first transaction is July 3rd, $60. Let's check that in QuickBooks. So I'm going to check this. And as you can see, the deposits and other credits automatically increase to $60.
and then also the cleared balance also increased by $60 so it is now 83.62 and the difference is now 8038.56 so let's continue our bank reconciliation next is 105 and 120 105 and then 120 dollars $380 and $200, July 22, $380 and $200. And then July 23rd is $500. July 26th is $11,136. And then July 29th is $23.50. So $500, $11,136 and $23.50. Okay, so as you can see here, the total for all the eight transactions is 12,524.50. Let's go to our Excel file. It's also 12,524.50. So our reconciliation for the deposits and other credits are, is correct. All right, so let's go to our withdrawals and other debits. Let's start with 73.10. Check it here. And the date is July 2nd, 73.10, right here. And then 40.10 and 0 0.03 cents, $490 and $2,000, July 23rd and July 30th. So $490, July 23rd, and $2,000 on July 30th. Okay. Next is a bank transfer to our other bank account. Ending in five two six seven six hundred dollars on July thirty first. Here, next is for the card account ending in seven four one zero. So this card account is a debit card issued by the bank. Okay, so let's start with twelve point twenty nine dollars on July first. July first, twelve point twenty nine dollars for Subway. 11.77 cents for the UPS store here. $20 on July 9 and tw another $20 on July 11th. Okay, so here, July 9 and another one for July 11th. And next is $300 for Hilton Tax Services here. And $19.49. For Amazon Marketplace, July 23rd. Okay, it's here. Let's go to the next page. Um, 101.51, July 29, 101.51, okay. $100. Okay. And then $60. Mm-hmm. $60 on July 29. So let's check here. This one is not in QuickBooks, so we're going to put a mark here. Not recorded. So we can go back to that later on. Next is 53.49 here. Next is 49.63 for Marathon Petroleum. July 29, 49.63. Okay, so this transaction is also not in QuickBooks, so we're going to go back to this transaction later on. Next is $40, July 29, year, then 20.63, it's here, 16.55, it's here, then... 9.83 and $5. And then $5. Next is 19.97. It's here. Next is $100. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's there. 47.07. Here. Next is 45.53 and $40. 45.53 and 40 dollars our total withdrawals and other debits in our bank statements is 4295.99 
but in QuickBooks, it is only 4,186.36 because remember, we have two transactions that we need to go back to. Next is we're going to do the bank charges here. So we have $335 on July 3rd. July 3rd. So there's only $235 on July 3rd. So we also need to go back to this. We're going to put a mark in our bank statement. Next is 14.95 on July 8th and then $10 on July 24. 14.95 and then $10. Okay, so let's go back to our unrecorded transactions. The first one is $60, July 29. July 29, $60. This transaction for UPS is a typo mistake. So this should be $60. To correct this, we can simply double click this and then change the amount. I will double click. And then change the amount to 60. Right? And then save and close. Yes. Okay, so it's now $60. I'm going to check this. Next is 49.63 for Marathon Petroleum. Oh, it's actually here. But the date should be July 29. So. The date here is July 11, so I'm going to double-click this to change the date to July 29, and then save and close. Then I'm going to check this. The last one is the bank charge for July 3rd. It's not recorded in QuickBooks. We'll go to the home page and then and then record the bank charge. So it comes out from our Checking account 7852. The date is July 3rd, 2013. The vendor is Bank of America, $35. And it is for bank service charges. I will put the memo, so overdraft fees, and copy the memo here. I will click save and close. And I'll go back to the reconcile window. Okay, July 3rd, okay, it's here. So I will compute for our total expenses or total withdrawals from the bank account. So the withdrawals and other debits is 4,295.99. And then the service fees or the bank charges is 129.95. So the total is 4,425.94. Let's check this amount in QuickBooks. The total checks and payments, 4,425.94. It's equal with our bank. The total transactions for checks and payments is 32 transactions. And this is the most exciting part. So as what I've said, if the difference is zero, it means that your bank reconciliation is correct. So all transactions in the bank statement are in QuickBooks. So everything is recorded. So your ending balance is 8,122.18. The cleared balance from QuickBooks is also 8,122.18, so the difference is zero. But as what you can see here in our windows, there is an uncleared deposit of 1,500. We need to identify what is this transaction. There's also a $300 check or payment that is also uncleared. So this 1,500 transaction is a deposit in transit. It means that we have already recorded this in QuickBooks on July 31st. So most probably this transaction is not yet cleared by the bank. So as long as you can identify the transaction, then it's okay if the transaction is there. And this $300 check or payment might be an outstanding check. So an outstanding check are checks that we issue to our vendors or suppliers but not yet presented to the bank. Since we already issued a check to our vendors, then of course we record that in QuickBooks. 
But the thing is, some suppliers doesn't present the checks to the bank for clearing. So that's why we're going to wait for the vendor to present this to the bank. So once presented to the bank, and then it will clear, then it will also reflect in our next bank statement. Okay, so we have already identified this. So it's okay if those are unchecked or uncleared. Okay, so next is I'm going to click the Reconcile Now button. This is our bank reconciliation report. So we have a summary report, a detailed report, and we can also display the two reports. So click display. This is our reconciliation summary report. This portion here are the cleared transactions. So checks and payments of 4,425.94, and then deposits and credits of 12,524.50. Our total clear transactions is 8,098.56. The cleared balance is 8,122.18. So this is the total of the beginning balance and our total cleared transactions. This portion here are the uncleared transactions or the unchecked transactions in our bank reconciliation window. So deposits and credits or deposit in transit is $1,500. And then the checks and payments or the outstanding check is $300. So the ending balance in our QuickBooks file is 9,322.18. So let's check our chart of accounts. I'll go to the home page and I'm going to click the chart of accounts. Double click this. Okay. So this is our ending balance in QuickBooks. So 9,322.18. So again, it doesn't match our ending balance in QuickBooks. It's 8,122.18, but it's okay because we have already identified th those transactions that are uncleared or unchecked. As you can see, there is a column here with check marks. So it means that each transaction with a check mark are cleared with the bank. Those transactions that are uncleared doesn't have check marks. So the 1,500 deposit in transit and then the $300 outstanding check. Okay, so let's go back to our reconciliation report. This is the reconciliation detail. It contains the individual transaction for each cleared items. And so these are the deposits and the credits and then also the individual transaction for the uncleared transactions. So the same ending balance in QuickBooks, 9,322.18. And then bank balance is 8,122.18. I'm going to close this. And then if you would like to see the report again, just click reports banking and then previous reconciliation just choose the bank account choose the date that you would like to display the reports we're going to display the two reports i'll click display all right here it becomes a pdf file and then the reconciliation summary all right there so that's how we do bank reconciliation in quickbooks for more QuickBooks tutorials, tips, and tricks, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.